Hey everybody, today's lesson is going to be part two of our bird baler study. Remember we read uh, your own very best secret place before we left for spring break and we use this handy dandy sheet here to record our thoughts about the story elements, the setting, the character description, point of view, plot, style, and theme, which is exactly what you're doing for your own book study um, of your own very best author. Um, so today what we're gonna do is read this, I'm gonna read the second book to you of the Bird Baylor series um, that I've selected, which is The Other Way to Listen. And I've also shared with you a Google form which comes across looking like an assessment. Um, it's not an assessment, it's just a way for me to gather the information um, and not have so many different documents to juggle. This Google form you can use um, and fill out with a partner. So if you wanted to um, do a Google chat with them or something like that, um, you can talk with somebody else as you go ahead and fill out this sheet. You can also have this sheet handy as you hear me read the story. Uh, you may want to take some notes as you hear the story going along. You can also always replay this video and go back and listen to the story, look at the words, try to, to do the video in such a way that you could access it to be able to fill out this information. So if you'd like to, learn, again, work with a partner to fill out that Google Doc, go ahead. There'll be a question at the very end that says, did you work with somebody else? It's not cheating if you did. Um, I really want to be able to, for you to be having those kind of conversations with someone else. Um, when we do our language arts check-in later, we will check in and see how everybody did on these. I'll be able to see your responses too, so that'll help guide me and know what we need to work on. Um, we'll have one more book that we'll do, uh, the third one, and then we'll be ready to do a little mini uh, author comparison paper for Bird Baylor. We'll do it together. That way, when you do your own independently on your own author, uh, you'll be good to go. So uh, next up is The Other Way to Listen by Bird Baylor. I recorded this at a different time, so there might be a little glitch here before that gets started. But have a great day, and um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. The Other Way to Listen by Bird Baylor. I used to know an old man who could walk by any cornfield and hear the corn singing. Teach me, I'd say, when we'd passed on by. I never said a word while he was listening. Just tell me how you learned to hear that corn. And he'd say, it takes a lot of practice. You can't be in a hurry. And I'd say, I have the time. Here's the picture. He was so good at listening. Once he heard wildflower seeds burst open, beginning to grow underground. That's hard to do. He said he was just lucky to have been by himself up there in the canyon after a rain. He said it was the quietest place he'd ever been, and he'd stayed there long enough to understand the quiet. I said, I bet you were surprised when you heard those seeds. But he said, no, I wasn't surprised at all. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. He just smiled, remembering. Here's the picture. Another time he'd heard a kind of rock. Another time he'd heard a rock kind of murmur good things to a lizard. I was there. We saw the lizard sunning on a rock. And of course we stopped. The old man said, I wonder how that lizard feels about the rock it's on and how the rock feels about the lizard. He always asked himself hard questions that take a while to answer. We leaned against another rock a long time passed, and then he said, did you hear that? They like each other. They like each other fine. 
I said, I didn't hear a thing. And he said, sometimes everything being right makes a kind of sound. Just like now, it wasn't much more than a good feeling that I heard from that old rock. Were you surprised to hear it? I always had to ask. He said, not a bit. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. I said, I wish that I'd heard it too. And he said, he thought I might someday. He told me how a friend of his once heard the whole sky full of stars when she was seven. And later, when she was 83, she heard a cactus blooming in the dark. At first, she didn't know what she was hearing. She found it by just following the sound. There were 20 flowers on one cactus, and they were all white as the moon. The old man said, most people never hear those things at all. I said, I wonder why. He said, they just don't take the time you need for something that important. I said, I'll take the time, but first you have to teach me. I'd like to if I could, he said, but the thing is, you have to learn it from the hills and ants and lizards and weeds and things like that. They do the teaching around here. Just give me a clue on how to start, I said. And so he said, do this. Go get to know one thing as well as you can. It should be something small. Don't start with a mountain. Don't start with the whole Pacific Ocean. Start with one seed or one dry weed or one horned toad or one handful of dirt or one sandy wash. I said, I'll take the sandy wash. He said he started with one tree. Every morning of his life, when he was young, he climbed a cottonwood and sat there listening. He told me it was worth the time. He said trees are very honest and they don't care much for fancy people. And he said he doesn't know of anything he ever did as important as sitting in that tree. Tell me everything you can, I said. He said, well, you have to respect that tree or hill or whatever it is that you're with. Take a horned toad, for example. If you think you're better than a horned toad, you'll never hear its voice, even if you sit there in the sun forever. And he said, don't be ashamed to learn from bugs or sand or anything. I said, I won't. He thought of one more thing. It's good to walk with people, but sometimes go alone. That way, he said, you can always stop and listen at the right time. I'll remember everything I said, and I did, but nothing worked. I thought there must be something wrong with me because I only heard wind and quail and coyotes and doves, just things that anyone could hear. I almost gave up trying. Of course, I still went walking in my hills. In fact, I used to sing to them a lot. I thought that since they wouldn't sing to me, I'd just sing to them instead. The day I'm telling you about now, I was singing, and the whole song was this. Hello, hills. Hello, hills. Hello, hills. Hello. And it was after, that was after I had been away five days, and I had missed those hills. Five days. 
I went out earlier than usual. You know how everything looks new at sunrise? Well, all those hills were looking new. I was just walking where I always walk. But that morning, I kept thinking, here I am. And whatever way I happened to go was always right. I climbed the rocky side, not the path. The rocky side is steeper, but I like it best. And all anyway, that's where I found my three hawk feathers. I stood at the top where I always stand looking down. Hello hills, hello hills, hello hills, hello. All I know is suddenly I wasn't the only one singing. The hills were singing too. The hills were singing too. I stopped. I didn't move for maybe an hour. I never listened so hard in my life. There she is. Of course, their kind of singing isn't loud. It isn't any sound you can explain. It isn't made with words. You couldn't write it down. All I can say is it came straight up from those dark, shiny lava rocks, humming. It moved around like wind. It seemed to be the oldest sound in the world. All I can say is I was standing in the middle of that sound at seven o'clock in the morning, just thinking, here I am, and thinking, listen, and not even being surprised. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. And that, my friends, is the story of the other way to listen. And so now that the story's over, I'm gonna invite you to uh, go ahead and open up that Google form. Go ahead and put in your name. Each person will fill out their own Google form. If you're working with another partner or another person, um, they'll also fill out their form, but you can talk about your answers together. So go ahead and open up that form, fill in your name, and it simply just goes through what is on this sheet asking you what the setting is, uh, who the characters are and how you would describe them, what the point of view of the story is. And if you need to look back at the video, go right ahead and do that. And when you are finished with that form, you'll go ahead and click submit. If you have any trouble at all with this, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm available almost every day and for sure during uh, office hours from two to three. And uh, I will, Look forward to hearing from you. So uh, have fun and I will check in with you soon.